Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Spirit Island. This is a one to four player area influence hand management cooperative game where you take the role of spirits utilizing your power, elements, fear, and energy trying to drive out all of the invading colonists and win the game. If the invader deck runs out, a spirit is destroyed or blight overruns the land, then the players lose the game. Now that we know what the in-game conditions are, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in Spirit Island. Now let's take a look at the components. You have island boards. These are double-sided, with the reverse side being the thematic map. On the island boards, the oceans are the edges. On the island boards, you have different regions, ocean, jungle, sands, wetlands, and mountains. In the corners of each one of these regions, you have a number and the starting population. The invader board, on the left side, you will have your fear deck and terror dividers. And going down that column, you have earned fear cards space and fear discard. In the middle of the invader board, you have the fear pool and generated fear. This is when you destroy cities or towns. When the fear pool is empty, you would be able to earn fear cards, which then can reach a new terror level, making it easier to win the game. On the right side of the board, you have the terror level. When you reach a new terror level, this will go in this space. Below that is your blight area. This is where your blight card and blight will be located. And at the bottom, you have your invader track. These are where cards will go from explore to build, build to ravage, and ravage to discard. Spirit panels. On the back side of the spirit panel, you have your spirit name, depiction, backstory, setup, and play style and complexity. On the front side of the spirit panel, you have a depiction, spirit name, special rules, growth options, presence tracks, one gains you more energy, and the other allows you to play more power cards. And on the bottom right, you have the innate powers. Cities, these have a health of three and deal three damage. Towns, these have a health of two and deal two damage. Explorers, these have a health of one and deal one damage. Blight, these overwhelm lands and destroy a spirit presence when added to a land. Dehan, these have a health of two and deal two damage. Power cards, you have major, minor, and unique power cards. On the top left, you have the energy cost. Next to that, you have the name. On the left side of the card, you have the elements gained. In the middle of the card, under speed, you have fast or slow, a bird or turtle, a range for the number of lands away, target, and under that you have the effects and the elemental thresholds. Invader cards. On the back of the card, you have the level, one, two, or three. And on the front of the card, you have a land type or multiple land types and a possible flag depiction. These represent adversaries. Fear cards. These are resolved during the invader phase and these are gained when the fear pool is empty. Terror dividers. These indicate the change in victory conditions when they are revealed. Blight cards. These are two-sided. One side says healthy and will remain until all blight are removed from the card and then it would be flipped to the blighted island side. Adversary panels. Adversary Reminder Tiles, Scenario Panels, Power Progression Cards. In each player color, you have Spirit Presence and Single Turn Effect Markers, Energy Markers in 1s and 3s, Fear Markers, Player Aids, and finally, your Rulebook. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three-player game, which takes 11 steps. Step 1, place the Invader Board to the side of the play area. Step two, place fear markers. Place four fear markers per player in the fear pool. Step three, create the fear deck. Shuffle the fear cards, draw nine face down for the fear deck space. You'll place the terror levels between every three cards. So after the top three cards, you'll place level two. And after the next three, you'll place level three. Step four, create the invader deck. Shuffle and draw three stage one, four stage two, and five stage three invader cards, placing them face down on the explore action space with stage three on the bottom, and then stage one on top. Step five, place a blight card. Place a random blight card healthy side up on the blight space. Then place the corresponding amount of blight on the card. Step six, place the island. Randomly pick one island board per player and arrange them in the center of the play area. Step seven, populate the island. Place invaders Dehan and Blight from the box as indicated by each region. Step eight, create supply. Shuffle and place the major and minor power cards, then place cities, towns, explorers, Dehan, and energy next to the play area. Step nine, get player components. Choose a color and get the corresponding spirit presence and single turn effect markers. Then choose a spirit by taking the panel and indicated unique power cards. Step 10, place player components. Following the back of the spirit panel, 
set up on your own island board, placing presents. Then flip the panel and place it in the center of your player area with remaining presents on the dashed circles on the presents tracks with the leftmost uncovered. Keep in mind that below your spirit panel will be your player's hand, above your spirit panel is the play area, and to the right will be your player's discard. Step 11, add explorers. Flip the top invader card and place an explorer in that region if it contains a city or a town, or if that region is adjacent to a city, town, or ocean. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of turns or rounds until an in-game condition is met. The players lose if the island is overrun by blight, if a spirit is destroyed completely, or if you fail to drive them out before they become entrenched, meaning that we have run out of invader cards. The players win if the spirits destroy the invaders a turn or round. Each turn or round consists of five phases. Spirit, fast power, invader, slow power, and time. Now let's look at each in detail. Phase one the spirit phase. Simultaneously, each spirit will carry out three steps. Step one, grow. Choose a growth action on your spirit panel. Keep in mind you must do everything, but you can choose the order. When you choose to gain power cards, you would draw four from either the major deck or the minor power card deck and choose one to go in your hand. If you chose the major deck, you would lose a power card that you have already for the rest of the game. Step two, gain energy. You gain energy equal to the highest uncovered number on your spirit presence track. Step three, play and pay for power cards. Select the power cards you will use this turn or round. The most you can choose is the highest uncovered number on your card play presence track. Then pay the energy for the power cards chosen and gain all elements from those power cards. Then we move to phase two, fast power phase. Simultaneously, keep in mind that sacred sites have more than one presence players would resolve their fast powers. These can be from the power cards or printed on your spirit panel. And these are indicated with the bird symbol. If you don't wanna carry out your fast power, you can skip it. Phase three, the invader phase. This is carried out in four steps. Step one, the blight island effects. If the blight card is flipped to the blighted island side, you would follow the effects on the card. Step two, Fear effects. If any fear cards were earned, you would flip the stack over and resolve them in the order that they were received. The effects that you would carry out are listed next to the current terror level. Then you would discard them to the fear discard space. Keep in mind that fear cards are earned when the fear pool is empty. Step three, invader actions. Based on ravage, build, and explore spaces on the invader board, cards in these spaces would affect which lands activate. For ravage, invaders ravage in a land type shown. They would deal one point of damage per explorer, two for a town, and three for a city to the land and Dehan minus any defend power. If they are damaging Dehan, every two damage destroys one. If it gets one damage, you would flip it over, but it recovers at the end of the turn or round. If they damage land, giving two or more damage, you would add a blight to the land. Adding a blight only happens once. When adding a blight to land, you would add an additional blight to an adjacent land. When you add them, you would destroy one presence from each spirit in that land, and those presence are removed from the game. Then the Dehan would fight back. They would deal two damage to the invaders. Cities have three health, towns have two health, and explorers have one health. Destroying cities and towns generate fear. For cities, it would generate two fear, and for towns, it would generate one. After we're done with the Ravage, we move to Build. In regions depicted with invaders, add a city if the region has more towns, and if not, you would add a town to that region. Then we move to Explore. Turn the top card face up. If there are no cards, the game is over and the players lose. You would add an Explorer if it contains a city or town or adjacent to a city, town, or ocean. Step four, Advance Invader cards. You would move the Ravage card to the discard, the build card to the ravage area, the explore to the build area. Then we move to phase four, slow power phase. These are indicated with the turtle symbols and players would resolve their slow powers. Then we would move to phase five, time passes. This is carried out in two steps. Step one, power cards are discarded. Players discard the power cards used to their discard area. Step two, damage and elements clear. The elements would go away, damage would go away, and single effect tokens are removed. Then turns or rounds would continue until an in-game condition is met. If the last blight is used, you would follow the instructions. If a spirit is destroyed with no presence, you would lose. If there are no invader cards to draw, you would lose. And based on the terror level, if you clear the island of all invaders of that depicted type, you are successful in removing the invading colonists and win 
Spirit Island.